I'm Joshua Overholt, and I'm the Senior Tactical Trainer here at the Viking Corporation. And what we want to talk about today is our double interlock pre-action system. Uh, our double interlock pre-action system that we're looking at today is our uh, VXD model uh, deluge valve. And uh, the particular type of double interlock pre-action that we're going to work with is called our uh, electric new electric. Now, new electric is kind of a play on words with pneumatic and electric. So it would uh, require a loss of air pressure in order to send an electronic signal to the VFR 400. Now, double interlock pre-action systems require two things to occur before water was released into the system piping. So in this case, in an electric new electric uh, setup, we will need detection to send a signal to our VFR 400 panel. And our VFR 400 release panel is going to uh, sit on that signal, basically, and wait for a second signal to occur. Now, when it receives that second signal, that second signal will then trigger the VFR 400 uh, release panel to open the normally closed solenoid uh, that's located here on the prime line uh, trim. And that normally closed solenoid is currently holding back the prime water that holds the valve in the closed position. So when the VFR 400 sends its signal over to this valve, it's going to power it or energize it and it's going to take it to the open position or the open state and that prime water pressure that's holding the valve closed is going to be sent to drain. Now the double interlock pre-action uh, setup with uh, as far as the air pressure is concerned, the air pressure in this uh, in the system piping is not only for supervisory purposes but it will also uh, perform an operational function and that's that new electric side of things. So with any pre-action system um, we can go ahead and and basically damage a fire sprinkler and we would not have water rush into the system. It would require some other things to occur. To demonstrate that, I'll relieve the air pressure here in the uh, system itself using the trip test connection. And that trip test connection, which is sometimes referred to as an inspector's test, will relieve our air pressure. Our air pressure will drop to zero. And when that air pressure drops to zero, water will still not be sent into the system piping. Okay, so let's take a look. With our air pressure now at zero, water has not entered into the system piping. But with that loss of air pressure, we have a signal over here in the VFR 400. And that VFR 400 signal is telling us that we have a low air pressure in our system. But again, water has not been sent into the piping network. So look, we're going to restore that air pressure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trip it as if it was under a fire condition. We'll activate our detection first. And then once our detection activates, we'll then open the trip test connection to simulate a fire sprinkler uh, activating in the protected area. And with that uh, trip test connection in the open position, our air pressure will then begin to drop and water pressure will be sent into the system piping. All right. So the first signal that we'll get when we do relieve that air pressure, and I'll do it nice and slow, is going to be our low air supervisory. And then as the air pressure continues to drop on our gauge, we'll get a low air alarm. And the low air alarm is going to be the second signal that the VFR 400 is uh, waiting for to open the normally closed solenoid. All right, so let's take a look. Detection occurs first. And with our detection activated, we have uh, our first signal sent to the uh, VFR 400 release control panel. Now the second signal that we're going to uh, send is going to be our air pressure. Now we're going to release the air pressure nice and slow. And um, what I'm going to do is close the air that's coming into the system so that you can see how this functions. But we're going to do it nice and slow. The first thing we're going to get on our VFR 400 is our low air supervisory followed by a low air alarm. When we get the low air alarm, that will be the second signal that the VFR 400 is waiting for, and it will open the normally closed solenoid. All right, so let's give it a shot here. Keep an eye on our gauge up here. We'll start to release our air pressure. There's our low air uh, supervisory, and our low air alarm was right there and now we have release of water into the uh, system piping. So with the system trip, the first thing we're going to do is secure the system control valve. 
As we close the control valve, that will stop our water supply. We're going into the system piping. So we'll get our system control valve in a closed position. We'll open our flow test connection drain. And we'll also open our system main drain. Now the system is currently draining. Uh, we still hear water moving and that's because we have the prime water valve still in the open position. So with a double interlock electric new electric, in order to get the system reset and to get air pressure back onto our PS40 switch which provided the um, second signal the VFR 400 needed which was that low air alarm, we have to reestablish our air pressure first. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close our system main drain. We're going to close our trip test connection. And we're going to get our air supply back on. With our air supply back on, we're going to reestablish our air pressure in the system itself. Now when the air pressure is reestablished here, we're going to hit the reset button on the VFR 400. When we reset the VFR 400, it's going to clear the low air supervisory and the low air alarm as well as it'll clear the detection alarm. Now when the detection alarm clears, it will also close this solenoid. Now the solenoid is currently powered in the open position, and, but we want to get it back to its normally closed state. Now when we do close this, because the prime water valve is open, our prime water will reestablish. So with our air pressure back up where we need it to be, we're going to hit the reset button, our detection cleared, and because our detection cleared, the normally closed solenoid has now been uh, returned to its normal status of normally closed. We still have a supervisory signal because we have the system control valve in the closed position, so we'll silence that. But uh, what we're going to do now is take our flow test connection in the back and partially close it. We'll open our system control valve. And with some water flowing, we'll close that flow test valve and we'll restore our system control valve to the full open position. We'll then check our VFR 400. We still have that supervisory here, so we're going to hit the reset button. And now this panel should be completely cleared out and green and our system has been fully restored.